Welcome to a brand new week and to a new study as we look at the life of Jesus Christ and an encounter he had with a blind man. And so we'll be focusing this week on John chapter 9. And we start with the first two verses. Now, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Now, Jesus used this encounter with this visually impaired person, a blind man, to teach about spiritual blindness and the need for us to open up to God and to his grace. And so this miracle is a, is a lesson in action. Jesus is using the miracle to teach a lesson. And there are a few things we want to start with as we observe these two verses from John chapter 9. The first thing I want you to note is the phrase Jesus passed by. It seems like a very casual statement that Jesus is just going on his way. And, and he's just moving. And, and when you read it, it would appear like Jesus uh, doesn't know what he's doing. But everything about Jesus was intentional and purposeful. So although it may seem like a, a little stroll or a little walk as he's moving, the passage doesn't tell us where he's moving from or where he's moving to. He seems to be moving, uh, but there is purpose in this moving. And so that's the first thing I want you to know, that even when we think what he's doing has no purpose, there is a purpose, there is an intention uh, behind what he's doing. The second thing I want you to note is Jesus saw him. In many of the miracles of Jesus, people reach out to him. But in this particular miracle, the blind person doesn't reach out to Jesus. Jesus is the one who initiates the recognition. He notices the man is blind. The man is not calling for help. He is not praying for help. But Jesus sees him. And so there are a couple of lessons we can learn from this. You know, because many times uh, we teach that until we ask God for help, he doesn't help us. And that is the general rule. But there are exceptions to that rule. There are times that God helps us, even when we're not looking for help. There are times we pray, and we, we, we pray wrongly, and still God answers. There are times we don't pray at all, and God still reaches out to us. So Jesus saw him. He took the initiative. He's moving by, and he saw him. And the one that I want you to pay attention to is the question the disciples ask him. Who sinned? The disciples also saw the blind man, and somehow they knew the man has been blind from birth. Probably he was a well-known blind man. And the question they asked the, the Lord Jesus is, whose problem is it? Is it the man himself or his parents? You know, the Jewish society uh, believed that when people got into trouble, it's because they have sinned or God is punishing them or something is wrong. Uh, and, and most of us believe that too, that when something is wrong in somebody's life, it must be that he's wrong. That is how Job's friends thought about Job's life. And so they asked Jesus the obvious question, whose fault is it? You know, many times when people get into trouble, instead of helping them, we want to find out whose fault is it? We want to find out the fault, the cause of it. As if finding out who caused it will solve the problem. You know, how is he going to heal the man, whether his father or his mother caused the blindness? It's not going to help him. Jesus doesn't get into that, and we'll find that tomorrow, how Jesus responded to this question. But that is interesting that many times we try to find blame for people's situation. And just understand, sometimes people go through hardship not because they've done anything wrong, but it's just because something has gone wrong in their life. It is not their cause, it's not from their parents, it's just something wrong. So that's what we learn from Jesus in this opening verses of John chapter 9. Let's pray. Say with me, Heavenly Father, I know you take notice of me. Thank you that you do not pass me by. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I just want to assure you, God will not pass you by. He sees you, and he will help you. I'll catch you again tomorrow. I'm Pastor Mesa Otabel. Shalom, peace, and life to you.